What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Hollywood Already Did It, your weekly podcast for movies that have been remade, sequelized, or unoriginal and uninspired, and examining why we do this terrible thing to our box office and (laughs) just go round and round and round. So, like Hollywood, we're going to ignore all the original ideas that came out this week and instead... Talk to you about Angel Has Fallen. I, of course, am your host, Blake Schultz, and with me is Terrence Tatum. Hello, everyone. This is the third movie in the Fallen trilogy, has which fa- is I guess a sentence the Has Fallen trilogy. Yeah, that I <laughs> never thought I would say. Never out thought I would be hearing that. Ever. Terrence, this is now a franchise that, in theory, has fans akin to how we treat The Matrix. Star Wars, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. There will be a box set. Oh, that's oh God. a special edition. Yeah. In 10 years, we'll have an anniversary. I, it might spin off sequels about foresters. <laughs> I am very confused how studios are still trying to make Gerard Butler a thing. Well, you see, he's very unassuming. <laughs> I'm not a big conspiracy theorist, but if I found out that Gerard Butler had blackmail on every single studio insider... I wouldn't doubt it. ...and they're allowing him to make average generic action yeah. movies forever, I would buy it. Yeah, I would be like, yeah, that makes sense. I don't sense. know why he wouldn't want to blackmail himself into a great franchise. <laughs> Maybe he knows his worth. He's like, which, mediocrity is where I'll stay. Congratulations to you. <laughs> it's good to know where you are. In the field. After 300, they tried to gave him The Gamer and Law Abiding Citizens. One of those films had an Oscar winner attached to it. Did not matter. Movies bombed. And yet he kept getting work. And now this is now his quote unquote series. And it's a very like, eh, series. People are aware of it, but oh, that's the movie that had a movie like it come out the same year. I remember that movie. Yeah, that's pretty much how people remember it, is it's like, oh yeah, they made two others of those, and I feel like this is the movie that like a, a dad in his 50s pours a glass of scotch and falls asleep on the couch 100%. watching. And it's just like, these fallen movies. These are great. This is a good time. Wow. <laughs> Let's I don't have to think very hard. Let's see what Mike Brennan's up to. How did you even know his name? What? <laughs> you know what I will say is I did remember his name after this. And there's a lot of movies with generic white men in the lead that I, I did cannot have to go tell look up. you the name. I was correct. Owen was the name for Jurassic. That's my go-to one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is you don't know his name. I'm sure there are others. <laughs> if you have a franchise and you can't remember the lead and he happens to be a white man. Not even white because I don't really know the Equalizer's name. I just know that he's no. I just know he's the, the equalizer, equalizer. <laughs> yeah, that's or true. Denzel, right? Uh, yeah, no. This joins a long list of what I call generic movies. Yeah. What I call generic play-by-play, mm-hmm. color by the numbers. I said walking out to go see this movie that I I am the hardest sell on this genre, this political action thriller. Yeah. This is one of the few genres that I sit down and I go, it's all the same. It is. And this movie is because there's scenes where Jada Pinkett Smith is like. <gasps> Get all the eyes on the cameras. I don't want to hear anything about a subpoena. I want to be connected to every computer network. Just saying these generic text spy words to motivate this story. And even the villain is this just like shadow organization with no real motive beyond like all politics. (laughs) Yeah. It's it just feels like every Call of Duty game that just needs a story to get you to the next set piece. It does feel like a video game or like a, a Call of Duty type thing, like mixed with the Fugitive. That's basically what this movie is. Like, oh, let's steal everything ah. from these. That remember that '90s movie that was based on a '70s TV series? We're going to steal bits of that. Why? <laughs> I don't even know if it's stealing anymore. I feel like they, they, they've made a meal. Out of all of the scraps that nobody yeah, ate. Like like the diehard like if you, remnants. It's basically a hot this is a hot dog series. Yeah, if you <laughs> opened a restaurant that was just in between three other restaurants, and every night you went into that restaurant's garbage and you picked out whatever nobody finished, and you threw yeah. it into a pot and boiled it, and then you deep fried it <laughs> and you served it to somebody. Yeah. That's what this movie is. Correct. It's just, some of it's familiar. Yeah. It's a little cold in the middle. Uh, you kind of feel it's sick. It's so sick, and you're like, well, at the same time, you're like, well, this kind of filled me up. I guess that was Morgan okay. Morgan Freeman's there. Yeah. Nick, Nick, they dug up Nick Nolte. I was what is happening right now? Um, and he was, he was fun. So this movie, okay, look, I watched, I do remember Olympus Has Fallen, vaguely, and I rewatched all of these movies up to, to for this one. Um... 
and I remember because I remember it was very R rated. I remember it was the R rated version of what White House Down was doing the same year that had Channing Tatum and uh, Jamie Jamie Fox. And all I remember is like, oh, this is a lot like Die Hard, but forgettable. And that's a little. That's kind of the case with Anton Fuqua. Like all the stuff that he directs is he's the director that you hire for fun. Like oh yeah, he can make stuff look pretty, but it's very forgettable. Like the second you leave, you're like I don't remember any of this. And that's what The Olympus Has Fallen is. And then London Has Fallen is just a bad movie. Like it's just trash. <laughs> this movie is the best of the three. That's not saying a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot in it. I sort of walked out, and I felt like I could have cut out. 45 minutes because there's some stuff in there that's maybe not well executed but is interesting yeah and there's some big set pieces i thought the drone strike was great drone strike is great i love the driving sequence at night with the truck that was great that was really well done uh i really enjoyed blowing up the hospital i thought that was a pretty cool it was cool like let's do it uh, I appreciated that we just killed people that we thought were main characters. I did, that was great. And this series has done a pretty good job of doing that all the way throughout. Like, yeah. spoiler for part two, and they kill off Angela Bass. I was like, oh, you're killing people that are actually important, which most series don't do. Yeah. Now, that didn't, you know, save the movie from some of the most just heavy tropes from the scared wife to yeah. even the, like, abandoned father who we have to yeah. find in the woods, who's off the grid and taking care of himself. I mean, this movie was so uninspired that we even had the almost like Western shot of slowly taking out the knife. We knew who the villains were right away. Well, I'd say that was my big issue that like just from the jump, my brain was like, oh, these guys are the villain. Like the very opening sequence of this movie has... Uh, Mike going through a training sequence and he's like meeting up with an old friend, which in the previous two friends films we never heard of before. So this is an old friend. I was like, oh, that means he's the bad guy. Like he's the guy that's coming. We're going to introduce <laughs> this new character that he has been in love with. His best friend. They they go so far back. He comes over to the house and has a drink with him. I was like, oh, this guy's going to try to murder him. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was. It's it's written clearly on the wall. If you study '90s action film 101, that's a given. Well, and it, and it, it we can't even just take the fucking Wizard of Oz cloak away. We have to go through half this movie with this, like, Emperor Palpatine. And we all know who it is. It couldn't be anyone else. (laughs) Right. It was so obvious that for a while I was like, maybe not. (laughs) I was the same way. Maybe not. Okay, this is too on the nose. There's no way they're actually going to go with the DP. Like, there's no way it can be the vice president. It can't be, right? And then he gets on the phone and starts talking. I'm like, shit, no, they're, they, they're just, they're, they're sticking to their guns. Yeah, it, ew, it, it's tough. And it's really a hard. They also kind of do the Dark Knight Rises thing where we have to sit down with Bennett <laughs> yeah. at this doctor's office and, you know, your Old spine, man. your spine is ruined and your skull is cracked and you're, you're a ticking time bomb and, it's a way and you're going to die. Right. And then later, Terrence, he covers up a grenade with a with body, body that then jettisons him head he first into a off concrete of the wall, wall and, gets up. and bounces off like a child yeah. buying a bouncing ball at a mall yeah. and then is just fine. And then there's a gunshot so that, that goes doctor, off by his ear that rings, like, and the, it rings for the effect of the the the, movie. the tinnitus. Yeah. yeah, but it doesn't slow him or stop nope. him in any way nope, whatsoever. Nothing matters. <laughs> nothing matters. Even movies like Hobbs and Shaw, which are preposterous, yeah. and they get up as if nothing has happened. Right. Still, like, kind of have things happen to them, and you're like, oh well, you know, it is the Rock. Yeah. This I was like, this is just an old. old man beaten man yeah. who we started off and the doctor's just straight up like please you sneak also to stop. you're a bad liar computer manufacturing <laughs> just also you're not like a secret organization <laughs> right, like, you're not a spy like, I, you're just in the secret service. service you can say that you're in the secret service you, you just wouldn't say like what branch or like what, what you what I would have to like, assume, also you're the president's fucking bodyguard right and you and you've been on television I was like, and you've saved the world twice he should know who the fuck no you are in the world is this doctor gonna be like well computer manufacturing you know in Washington D.C. we don't get the news <laughs> turns out I saw you save the president twice this just oh god by, bothers me by by the way it's a small thing and it's a thing when you make a trilogy that, that kind of bothered me 
In the first two, Aaron Eckhart's the president, and that's who's the president, and Margaret Freeman's the vice president. So we're saying that in this film, within a couple of days of appearing, because the baby is what you're going to use as your birth point, you're saying that Aaron Eckhart stopped being the president and the VP was voted in. Unless Aaron Eckhart was murdered, which we would have, I seriously, there's a very small window that he is going to be elected as vice yeah, president. Yeah, there was, it, uh, pre- the timeline's just very <laughs> the baby, messy. Like the, your baby was even, born in two, and then it's literally still a, a baby in, in the next one. Even the Morgan Freeman stuff is just so tropey. Yeah. We've got to put him in a coma for, for the, the entire, entire movie. Film. And, you know, normally when we do that, it's like, oh, well, you know, the guy in the coma knows who the murderer is, and we've got this yeah. ticking clock. He knows And Morgan nothing. Freeman wakes up, and, and they're like, like sir, we highly suspect we have a mountain of evidence <laughs> so high that the FBI and the CIA just believe they it. just they have captured no them. no no bring him to me <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do it I'm Morgan Freeman <laughs> bring me Gerard Butler and we're going to listen to this I want to hear what he has to say mm. Mm, I don't believe him. he's the only reason I'm alive so I'm gonna go with him <laughs> I'm going to trust him. Sure, fine. That all works. Right. But if that's your logic, they all else should have been like, you know. He's been pretty good. He's, out, he's, out of the two times we've done this before, he's saved our ass. And, and, and Jada Pinkett, too, just goes through this whole thing. And then finally, just half flips the movie. Just is like, now hold on. Wait a minute. I There's a chance. <laughs> and the white guy's like, bitch, are you serious? We Do go- you remember <laughs> how earlier he was like... Just think about it. It's pretty obvious I was framed. Right. What if, and hear me out, it's crazy, he was framed. This is an original idea that I've had. And, and her and partner is just standing to, there like, I mean, sure. And then I'm just going to approach this man I now With suspect. no one else behind you. Of global <laughs> terrorism. You saw who, the sheer amount of bodies that were sent to that ca- that barn. Who not only tried to assassinate the president, but sent a drone strike, the likes what? of which the nation has, has never, never seen, seen. Which killed your entire presidential entire security team. service team. You then... And you're just going to walk while up trying to trans- without a gun? While trying to transport Mike, shot everyone in that vehicle. <laughs> And your plan is to just waltz up to him and be like, I've Let's got talk. you pegged. It turned out I know what you're doing. Oh, then I'm going to murder you. <laughs> I mean, and just so quickly. That part I like. That liked. was great because I was like, oh, that you don't get bad guys. Like usually they'll talk him out or like talk. Yeah, no, he has like, to reveal his yeah. evil plan. No, that was great. Which his evil plan is just like, ah, we haven't had work in a while. So I want to work. <laughs> I'd like to get a job. That'd be great. Which if you get, uh, they deposit $10 million. So that they could do this contract, yeah, which I can only assume <laughs> is less than ten million dollars. It has to be. Let's just take the ten million dollars, right? <laughs> Let's just kill the president. Yeah, he's just in a hospital, which you've nuked. No, right, you completely wiped off the planet. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. so why not just speed up this whole process? Call the VP, who's like. Just oh, this whole movie. I did movie. chuckle a couple of times um, at the sheer like lunacy of trying to put in real world politics. Like they would be like, "Oh, this is Russian," or the "Make America Strong Again." I was like, "You've got to be, fu- you've got to be fucking." I have me. that in my notes, <laughs> and I don't have anything else to say about the actual movie itself, except I mean, I could, I guess, but yeah, I wrote down the same thing where I was like, "Okay, what we are trying to explore here is why make this movie? Why yeah. are we doing this? Why yeah. have we made three of these?" <laughs> Just this is mediocre. Is it because it's easy? They're not cheap. Yeah, I mean, like, what, the 20, I think it was one was 60 million, one was 70, this one's somewhere between 40 and 80. They're not quite putting that out there. This one seems a little bit more expensive. Yeah, they're not than quite the putting it two. out there because if they say they made 20 million on their 80, 80 million, million and then probably another 60 million on marketing and advertising, right. it suddenly it's a, it's is not that big failure. of a hit. But right. right now, at 20 mil with nothing else, you can be like, we did it. We really stuck Look it to us. Disney. <laughs> like, uh, we got our second number one of the year. Like, we'll uh, get to all of that. Sure. But yeah. So, they try so hard to make this movie relevant without making the relevancy important to the story. Like, normally if you're going to do a, like, Make America Great Again story or, like, a, ooh, Russia's using Facebook, you kind of do something with yeah. that. It, it affects the global populace. It'll affect the characters. It'll motivate these people. But all the vice president seemingly wants in this movie is to prove that America is not like a we pussy. Yeah, it's like I want to. Yeah, he's like 
There, right. His only reason is like to say that the president is like war is an option, and the president's like, I'm saying war is an option. It just shouldn't be our first. Yeah, option. Morgan Freeman gets on a stage and is like, I want to make it known. Yeah, that if we go to war, we thought about every other option. Right, and the VP is like, like, hold up, let's fuck those other options. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We need to show which, like, not even Donald Trump. Which is what this is trying to mirror right. poorly, which should be easy to do because SNL does it every week. <laughs> right. Even Donald Trump wasn't like, let's just go fuck up North Korea. <laughs> right. This president is almost like a fucking Inspector Gadget villain. He is. Where he's just like, no, I really, really want to go to war with Russia and like the- because they did stuff to Facebook. Right. Which then all of a sudden put such a weird timeline on this movie. Right, because then it was like messed with the elections. And I'm like, well, wait, are we saying this is a current Are we day? saying that the Russians... Like, elected Aaron Eckhart? Well, like, what is this? Are or, we now or, going all the way back and saying right. that Aaron Eckhart is the Trumpian figure? Or are we saying and that, that Facebook that did that? Freeman or did they do it to Morgan the, Freeman? Right. Yeah. And are you trying to rectify it? Then this is where it falls apart. Because you can make an interesting movie of a vice president who wants to kill the president because he's like, you shouldn't have been elected. Right. And Russia did this. Right. I'm into that idea. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Because then you're like, oh, fuck. Right. This is what's going on with our life. And I, I kind of want him to die because yeah. he's a bad man. But you're a bad man and I'm conflicted. And that, Terry, is how you make an interesting yeah, and thematically right. relevant idea. Right. For him to posit that the Russians have been meddling with elections when in the time of this franchise, we've had three presidents, one of whom was elected because the other one was murdered, <laughs> right. implies that Aaron Eckhart was a, was trying to get in, in bed with Russia? <laughs> yeah. Which is an enormous twist on the franchise. Considering that we've tried to save that president twice. <laughs> and you, you just, you gotta think... What is that saying other than really shoehorning in a relevant theme? Right. And even for him to get up and be and just say fucking make America great again. Right. I was like, if you're going to do it, just we have to do show it. America has strength once more. It's like in the Amazing Spider-Man when Uncle Ben was like, <laughs> the now Peter, with line. yes. When you have the ability <laughs> to say be stronger, just fucking say more it, Uncle. powerful. <laughs> There comes with that an onus <laughs> to also understand the repercussions of your actions. We're going to ruin this franchise for a third time now that they're out of the <laughs> MCU, right. and we can't wait. We're going to murder Uncle Ben so good. Oh, my God. It's like... <laughs> so, yeah, they, they shoehorn in all of that and try to pretend like this is a, a like very 2019 relevant movie. Yeah. But you don't even really have like clear ideas of is Morgan Freeman a liberal? Is the is the vice pre- does he have a liberal or conservative agenda? Right. Because Gerard Butler is just out there with a license to kill, just to murder, which doesn't anyone. really seem like a Bernie Sanders kind of move. Yeah. And and, and it seems like Freeman's president because he's done it before knows that so he's like I'm just going to send this blunt instrument out there and start murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you'll save me. Yeah, it Kill becomes everyone. like this James Bond, yeah. not even, yeah, this like GoldenEye Moonraker James Bond, yeah. where it's just, go, go. Yeah. Go, Gerard Butler, <laughs> even though your spine and you, hips don't everything work. Everything on you hurts. <laughs> the doctor said that you were a ticking time bomb. Yeah. Yeah. And we try to do this C story with his wife, who's going back to work. We do, and then that just gets thrown away. With her, that just gets thrown there's, away. There's no even attempt to make her a strong and th- 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 three dimensional character. No, I mean I'm pretty sure that's probably why they act because they switch actresses. They switched. The actress. <laughs> I was staring there for a minute. I was like, Piper Parable was not in the first two. No, no. See, in the three days <laughs> <laughs> that she's when she had birth, she immediately changed D- her skin. Divorced Gerard Butler. <laughs> this is now a new woman with a new baby. <laughs> yes. Oh, and then we meet this dad who's living this like Logan esque lifestyle, which is, is now every movie has to have you this. You have to have one. Rambo's like Logan a, with the Rambo Home Alone style. Like I'm doing everything to this this whole forest. Yeah, he didn't do everything to that forest. Like this. <laughs> It's almost like Guardians of the Galaxy 2 with Rocket and the Bobs. There is just Moonraker lasers everywhere (laughs) and proximity mines, the likes of which would wipe out 
three city blocks. Correct. All to kill two, seven men. You can't tell me that a man is said to have lived off the grid and bought enough and purchased enough explosives he to mine use an entire medicine, country. <laughs> is a line he says to his son. <laughs> right. And yet, he has strung he together could bomb an entire a maze, nation. <laughs> a cacophony of weaponry that would make Iron Man sad. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, astounding. But I liked... I like. I did too. And he gave the one thing a lot of the series has not had is some type of levity. It's always taken itself a little bit too serious. And Nick Nolte was the one guy who was kind of like, "All right, now I'm going to put in inject in the third trilogy, in the third part of the trilogy, which should be the last one, but who knows? Um, I'm going to inject some type of like life and a little bit of levity and like a little quirkiness to this." And I was like, "Oh, I actually." kind of dig that. I wasn't enough quirkiness when the woman was singing the Pledge of Allegiance half naked. Oh, Jesus. I forgot that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mr. President. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. To the point that this movie ends rid- like with them going to a, f- a, a f- just float situation and like in a, in, a, in, a, in a chamber. And I'm like, wait, this is your button to the end of this, what could possibly be the last part of your franchise. You're like, Let's have the dad and the son go to Just Float. Like, yeah. Wait, what? What is this? <laughs> Jesus. What is this movie? Uh, it amazes me that we've made three of these. It they, amazes me. Yeah. And they've all consistently made the same. Like, there's no ebb or flow into the money. Which that is made. even more amazing. <laughs> right. It's amazing. I don't even know what it means. Mm-mm. I don't know if it means that. Can you just put something in 4,000 theaters and just people like will you're show get, up? You're going to get $25 million? Like that is that the way it is? Does Gerard Butler just have that much? Like his pool is only enough to get $25 million? Because I refuse to sit office? here at the end of our summer season and go, Disney may have run the box office, but Angel has fallen as a testament to original <laughs> filmmaking. I'm not going to live in a world <laughs> where that's a sentence anyone's saying. Yeah. At all. No. That's preposterous. Considering that the very premise of this entire series is a ripoff of a uh, previous. I was going to say, action. like, look, this this really actually begs the question. This is a way better question than anything we can pull out thematically and relevant to this movie. Because all they really do to pretend to be relevant is to toss out some fucking Russian election <laughs> bullshit. Right. That does nothing. <laughs> we should go to the Russians because Facebook is... <laughs> That's, Basically, what, that's the VP is is doing, what the VP is who doing, who is deceiving everybody. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> this little rat. <laughs> who then just gets walked out to prison. Yeah, and and for a moment, Morgan Freeman was like, I consider I was thinking about just letting around you having you. the job. Like, wait, no. <laughs> that's not how a president works. <laughs> What an insane thing to write down. You shouldn't be the president if that was a thought you had. Morgan Freeman is a good actor (laughs) who makes smart choices. And he read that sentence and was like, that fits my brand. (laughs) God, that's right up there with all of my other hits. Bruce Almighty, The Shawshank Redemption. Angel has fallen. (laughs) Why not? Why not? Not Bruce Almighty. Um, No. He was in Bruce. But I think Evan is the more of the... Yeah, he's God. Yeah, he's God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, some of those Jim Carrey movies, they just blend. Because, <laughs> you know, we used to pay him to make what this movie's what box this, office correct. was. So don't tell me... $20 million a movie. That, that, that was the thing back don't, then. Don't tell me that this is a good number. <laughs> I won't have it. We used to just throw this at actors, and now movies are opening to this, and you're like, So cool. what is originality now? What is our now bar? Because this movie... This franchise was lauded. Yeah. Lauded. There's one article in Forbes that I'm very upset about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's being lauded annoying, by yeah. me. <laughs> and this pedestal that I've created for myself <laughs> to yell at nothing. Yeah. And be frustrated. It's an annoying article. Um, they go as far back as to say that Olympus has fallen. 
chose, which is a weird thing, as if this was going to be a Die Hard remake, that this was going to just rip off instead of remake. Mm-hmm. It's Die Hard in a whatever. White house, in a, die Hard here, in a Die White Hard house, here, Die Hard in here. A plane. Kind of like Passenger 57's Die Hard in a plane. Right. Like, that's the idea. And we've seen this yeah. trend happen before, yeah. right? We've seen Skyscraper, mm-hmm. The Meg, Under most Siege shark is a, movies. Is a Die Hard on a boat. Life, yeah. Alien, yeah. most la- the, Friday the 13th, is Halloween. Halloween, yeah. Like they're, this isn't a new thing. Right. And yet, I feel like we live in a climate right now, at least some people on the internet do, because obviously these end games and Lion Kings and Aladdins are making more billions money than billions God. Billions and billions, yeah. So clearly that's where we want to go. We're not fighting this. At least the majority of audiences aren't. I'm not. Yeah. Um, does this count as an original idea? I I'll mean, even challenge it with a movie we both liked. Is Book Smart good boys? Are these. It's hard because Good Boys. If you could, if you wanted to strip it down, you could be like, "This is like super bad," or "This is like a super bad with girls, girls super, super bad, bad with, with kids." kids yeah. Brightburn was just bad Superman. Right. Like, what really truly constitutes as an original originality anymore? Right. Um, I, I feel like the way that people are tagging that term now is strictly: Does it have an IP that it is based on, or if it is, or is it a sequel to something that? Sure. Um, so if it's like a comic or a, a graphic novel, like technically uh, the Melissa McCarthy, Tiffany Haddish one that just came out is is the not kitchen. An or, it's not an original property. It's right. based on a graphic novel, so that would fall into not being original, even though having an all female cast would lead me to believe that that is an, like that's an original idea or at least an original thing that you're putting on screen. But it falls into the this is an original. So you wind up with a very small window. Like your what you would constitute the way that people are doing it as original would only be like small art house films. Like Loose would be an original an original film. Like that's one on one that you'd be like, okay, that's sure. an original that's an original film. Um, but even if you probably strip that down, you'd be like, well this is based on something. Like you can get the bare bones. <clears throat> but we've talked about this before. All movies are of a seven Seven structured skeleton, like they right. all have some type of. This all goes back to that philosophy: right. <clears throat> seven stories, seven conflicts. Right. So I think really the challenge becomes less, and I even get it from a pitch standpoint, right? If you're working in the studio, if you're even trying to get a friend to go see a movie, hey, let's go see Brightburn. I don't know what is it. It's bad Superman. Yeah. It saves a lot of time, and you immediately kind of get. I, what and you I've see. heard people. Like I'm not in their conversation. I hear them. That's how they they describe Brightburn. It's like, oh, it's like Superman, but it's a bad one. I was like, all right. I mean, now what annoys me about Brightburn and and other kind of some of these original or unoriginal. And I'll I'll use Brightburn and I'll use Booksmart as my two examples. Okay. Brightburn just is evil Superman. There's no other. There's no other thing that that movie posits right or tries to bring up. We're we're even something like The Boys, Mm -hmm. which is the Amazon show. Right. It, it's just evil Justice League. Correct. This is, in theory, the same idea, but that is a world a that goes, yeah. well, we're going to deal with, we're going to make some of these characters empathetic. Mm-hmm. A-Train's going to kill somebody, but he's on drugs, right. and he gets racially profiled, mm-hmm. and he's got to kill his girlfriend, and you know the only reason he's got to do that is because these people did right. this, and da-da-da-da-da-da-da, and yeah. it builds kind of, it fleshes out and challenges more themes. Correct. So I will argue that The Boys is a more original idea than yes, Brightburn. because it takes it further and does more with it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, and Booksmart, it's really easy to be like, this is super bad with girls. Right. And parts of it are, mm-hmm. because it falls into that genre right. and into that story. So you have the beat where they're both mad at each other. Correct. You have to have this big beat. But that also was a movie, unlike Superbad, that kind of even... Challenge sexuality. Yeah. Challenge your perceptions. It, it built out different thematic ideas. It said something different with that template. Good Boys was even a movie where super bad and book smart are, we're going off to college, we might not be friends. Right. Good Boys takes that a step further and is like, when you're a kid, these are your friends because your you're friends close. friends are proximity. And friends. you're going to grow and have different things. Right. And the end of that movie sees these all these people... And they're like, we will always have those moments, but we're kind of now forging yeah. new moments with new friends, but we can always have this moment. When exactly. We come and yeah. to me, I go, well, that makes it original. <clears throat> right. It There's does. also, you know, different jokes and styles right. and, and all these other things. But really, it comes down to what the movie is saying. And I think Superbad was a movie that at the end was like, well, we're going away, but we're always going to be friends. Right. Where Good Boys was a movie that was like, we're friends right now. Right. Yeah. And you're like, well, that's different. Right. And then even Booksmart was like, well, we're friends now. 
but, but we, we might go here and yeah. here and this and that and come back. Yeah. And it challenges it because it isn't enough. We've seen this also in box office numbers where it's not enough to be like, well, it's the black diehard. Yeah. And you're like, so, so what? Right. But then yeah. Black Panther, yeah, good, right, you say could that. be like, it's Black Thor. Right. But it's not. But it's right. But it posits more questions. It posits the whole, like, if you're not from this country and you go out, do you have a saying to deal with what happens in your in your original world? I, I think you're right. Yes, Black Panther on the surface, you'd be like, this is Thor, or this is such and such, like an, or another original. But when you break it out, it has something else that it's saying, and that's why it's done done as well. Doctor Strange and Iron Man. Correct. Are the, same, the, same. The, the structure is Most. the same. Oh, superhero stories. The original, most, or especially the originals, and usually yep. they're <clears throat> the origin stories are usually. Someone the same. dies, you get your powers, right. you go do this. Yep. But there's a reason why Spider Man, Iron Man, Batman, and Superman have such a different mythos and feel to them. Right. Otherwise, we wouldn't <laughs> we wouldn't have eight of these in the top ten yeah. of the box office, right? Yeah. But you even look at something like Toy Story Four, which is the fourth movie in a franchise, right? And yet had more original ideas and themes in it. Than any other animated movie that come came out. Yeah, but it had to build on the bones of something else. So Correct. I, this kind of concept of originality, I think, is getting watered down it's a little bit. Muddy. Yeah, and I and I think Angel Has Fallen is a really good example of a movie of a franchise that just kind of parades around as original, but it's really like three, it's like three kids in a trench coat parading around as an adult. Yeah. And you take that trench coat off and, and like, there's, there's Die Hard and, Rob- and Fugitive. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> right. wait a minute. <laughs> it's like a Scooby-Doo movie where it's like, well, let's see who's really behind the mask. It and is. There's Die Hard's face. It is. And every other political movie. I think in a weekend that I where I saw, and you, you could even pull at this one too a little bit if you was like, oh, it's Clue, but a, a, a funny version, like a horror funny version. But like I saw Clue, I mean I saw Clue, I saw Ready or Not, and I saw Angel Has Fallen. For me, Ready or Not is infinitely more original and more creative and just more fun than anything that Angel Has Fallen. And that's about. really the word you hit was creative. Yeah. Ready or Not was such a creative movie. It is. And I kind of, I think if you had taken a little bit further of Angels Fallen, you could have found a creative way to make this less tropey and less whatever. But, because you're right, if you really know cinema, you can take Ready or Not and be like, well, it's Clue Mm -hmm. with elements of this, with elements of like the most dangerous game, Mm -hmm. and we're just hunting and we're doing this. It's Cabin in the Woods. We're yeah. going to take this like the, supernatural paint and job. And the tone is kind of going up, yeah, up and down. Yeah, yeah. and you can wire all of these things mm-hmm. together and make this Frankenstein movie. Right. And you're either going to make a Frankenstein movie like Angel Has Fallen or you're going to make one like Ready or Not. Right. And Ready or Not is just so far and away one of the most original movies that we've had in a while. Oh, wow. Where I really... I can't just do it's evil Superman. No. It's it book smart is blah, 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 blah. All no. of these other examples I've used. Like it's the style. It's, it's just a really smart and, and well executed film that I think, unfortunately, because it's, it, it is a Fox Searchlight film, the number of theaters it has is lower. But I think if this was a major, like a major release, it would have been a number one film. Yeah. Um, had it been through Fox Disney proper as opposed to, Disney Fox Searchlight. <laughs> but I think, you know, I mean, as this Disney merger kind of goes on, this this will be the kind of thing, almost like their Miramax, where they can now be like, look at these smaller... Yeah. And I don't know if it's because of Disney or because Fox Searchlight is at its 25th anniversary, but this is the widest release that a Fox Searchlight movie has ever mm-hmm. gotten. Mm-hmm. So I'm not a big fan of the Disney merger, but like maybe... In a few years, these are the kind of things that we'll see get a bigger, more aggressive push. The merger killing stuff like Fox 2000 made me nervous. If Fox Searchlight allows this type of stuff to come out where we have like a Miramax, like the old school Miramax slides brand, then I'd be a little bit more comfortable because I feel like we still need this stuff to exist. And the difference between Fox Mm. 2000 and Fox Searchlight, unfortunately, is Fox Searchlight makes money. Yeah. Fox, Fox 2000, 2000, I love Love, Simon, I and love I love the hate you give. give. It did not bring in money. <laughs> yeah. Any money. Yeah. Um, both of which are excellent. They're original, great. Original. Yeah. Yet based, based on Based on book. IP. Yeah, based on books. And that's, you know, it gets really challenging. It's hard to do. And I just think that people don't really want to do the work. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I think, And I think, for me, that's where a lot of times where I'll put in 
when I track something as being more original. Like if it's a book or a comic book or a book, you you already have a base level blueprint kind of written. Like yes, you can es- expound upon that and, and further things out. But something like Ready or Not or something like Loose um, that just came or or the last black uh, last black man in San Francisco. Right. Those films are from the ground up brand new. And those in someone's head have always been hard to find. Yeah, correct. It's like movies have been based off of books and yeah, everything yeah. else since the dawn of time. Right. It is really, really challenging to find something like John Wick or Matrix, or Star just, Wars, just pull the out of Matrix. Yeah. Like I, those are really the only three that I can think of that are as like big massive. as those franchises. Right. right. Like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter books. books. Mm-hmm. The MCU oh, is a Jura- real Jurassic story. Park. Is, is a, a book. book. <laughs> right. Yeah. And but that's even where Jurassic Park is also a good example of where you can like make the take mm-hmm. original and use it as a jumping right. point. And I think that's really the challenge. And I and I think that's kind of something else that's fun to explore when we do these episodes. It's unfortunate when you get to something like Angel Has Fallen where it just is like Man, this. I could have copy and pasted it, this yeah. dialogue and I I have seen these. I have seen this shot this way. This like at least put the camera in a different place when you're having them slowly draw out their <laughs> knives. This feels like we one do of those the same thing where he gets a stab. And he's got to oh, he's got to push the knife and back. Twist it, yeah, like I just come on. This definitely feels like one of those scripts that where you would put like if some if there was a contest or something, and all of a sudden you're like, let's put let's four friends go completely in separate rooms. And come up with something, and we'll hodgepodge our stories together and make Angel is Fallen. That's what this movie feels like. So then, let me ask you this: How do you make the Has Fallen trilogy a little more creative and challenging? Mm. What is the way to take away the Die Hard in a, or you know, whatever this one even is, Black Ops Four, Fugitive, Call of Duty is yeah. Mm. It's hard. I, I, Cause the way I would go is more political, but then you start getting into the Bourne series. And I think that's the series that I kind of want this to be. Um, I don't know. I don't think, I think one of the biggest problems is that I don't think Gerard Butler is an, uh, a person that you can count on as an everyman. Like he doesn't feel like an everyman. No. And I think that's, that is the biggest like jump off point that's hard for a lot of people to get into is like Bruce Willis when he was McLean you could ice like oh I can attach to that person well and that was already scaled down right, right? like we're not at a point with Die Hard in A yeah where we're at, at 10 correct where Die Hard was always very like super manageable. scaled down right yeah um, and I, I think two things I watching this entire series I've never seen Mike Bannon really really get hurt like he's never he's always kind of been not not to the point where he's doing Die Hard 4 where he's flipping a car over and getting out, but it's still, like, it's very hard to actually have him take an L or, or take a pain. I think these movies need to, for him to get on to, bring him down a peg, you have to take, have to have him take an L somewhere in this series. Yeah. Just to kind of, like, oh, shit, he's actually gone through something. Um, whether it happened to his wife, like, something has to happen to him to tragically change who he is as a character because right now there is no connection to him. Yeah. Um, for, as an audience, it's like we've been through three films, and I don't feel any closer to him than I than I did when this first. No, time. and there really isn't a lot of growth right. in that character until yeah. you know he's a decalcified skeleton <laughs> that can break at any moment. <laughs> except, of course, when a concussive <laughs> grenade <laughs> bounces him. From that one was side my of the wall just like I another. was sitting in that AMC, and he hit that wall, and I just out loud was like, "He should be dead." When the grenade came, he was like, "Grenade!" And I was like, "No, there's no way." And I knew he was just going to put the body on top of him. I was like, "He should be gone." It also gets really weird because that's another sequence we've seen a thousand times, 100%. right? We do it in Captain America every Correct. chance we can. Right. Uh, but even then, when he like puts the shield over it, there's always a part of me that's like, really? Yeah. Like I get that you are. It, shouldn't the shield always come come up, come up a bit? Yeah, like, like, and like the only reason we can in our brain posit that Cap would be okay is because he's, he's not a super, super soldier. soldier. This man is a human, and what we've been told, a human in a lot of pain. <laughs> oh, and he keeps having these. We didn't talk about these migraines that do nothing, nothing. to him. Yeah. All of, and so that's okay. You well, whatever. Pops. I'll answer my own question. Yeah. Making it more original to me is like one. I think you would 
I'm a big fan now of like this ready or not thing where it is in one location. And I, I really love do, movies like that. I do go, well, what else can fall? Yeah. You, now, granted, you started at the White House. Started at the White House. You're not really going to get... No. So you almost have to like scale it back. Right. And it, it is one of those weird things to be like, well, maybe you do make it a Facebook thing, but that president's retired. And now it is like... I have to go defend him on his, in his house. Because the president, only even once they the, are retired, still have Secret Service that are watching this. Only for yeah. the twist to be like, yeah, I hacked that election. Right. My presidency has come and gone. Right. And it's like, well, what do you do with that? Yeah. Do you stay on his side and stop this terrorist? That's a way to humanize Mike. Because you're like, this Mike, win? right, it's like how he's going to be torn. Because like, I've protected this man. This man has been my job. But he clearly did some shady stuff. Now, do I still have my honor and yeah. owed to him? Or do I do it towards the country? Yeah, and if we're going to add all of these stakes, if we're going to add the brain problems and the back problems and the knee problems. Pay it off. Like, something has to oh, use Like, that. yeah, have yeah. him lose. Right. Do something. We can't just go meet his dad in the woods. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because, again, like, these are all just things you're pulling. So, I get that it's hard, I just and I'm he was not in a, a car writer. accident in this movie yeah. and just walked off and Oh, was he fine. was in, like, a dual-style <laughs> car accident. Like, it's insanity. I just like I'm like bring it down a little bit. You can still have the high action. You yeah. can still have your drones. Yeah. But just kind of like think about what this movie is, the Fallen trilogy, and what else can fall? And just shove them in that. Yeah. A boat. I don't care. A yeah. prison. A prison like, would be interesting. Go somewhere. We don't need to genre jump. It doesn't certainly need to be yes. super soldiers yeah. and blah 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 blah. You can just have them go somewhere. That we, even if we haven't seen it before, seen it in a while. Right. And that's where I do go, well, we do live in this, like, Russians invading, fake news kind of world. How can you now make that and, like, retroactively make the stakes of this movie matter? Right. How can, like, and what would we do with that? What do you do, and maybe we've had this in our history and I don't know it, where it's like a president just does his four years, goes away, and then, like, ten years later is like, yeah, I did a lot of bad I shit. I did some shady shit. Like, what do you do with that? He's yeah. done. Right. If Donald Trump's presidency ends and then he turns around and he's like, yo, the Russians elected me, are we all just kind of like, well, well, he got us. got us. Like, fuck. Well, damn. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, what if we found out about Watergate today? Right. And it's like, mm, mm, there's, no, yeah. there's not, and like, that's the movie I would want to see where yeah. he finds out that it's like, this guy is actually just. That would be dope. Because then if, like you said, like I said, they're still, the circuit service are still trained to, are still supposed to be watching them. Uh, even after their presidency is in. So if that news comes out and then all of a sudden a team's like, oh, well, fuck him. We're going to go fuck him up. Do you still do you still protect him? You're like, well, now I feel kind of And torn. you can just make it like a small militia. Yeah. We met this weird small militia <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. Um, like just, yeah, make it that. Make it just a bunch of like pissed off people that he betrayed. We don't need, it doesn't need to be... Huge, huge, insurmountable. And I think, yeah, I think that's that's what happened. London has fallen, got too big. They tried to scale it down a little bit more with this one, but London has fallen. That that was the issue. They just were like, "Well, how do we fix from the White House? Just go bigger." That's not always the answer, <laughs> right? It's almost never the answer. No. Did they release the production budget for Angel Has Fallen? No, there's, Last time I looked, they were like, "We're not talking about." It's it. like it's this weird forty to eighty. Like they're not actually saying. All right. For cost. All right. I never trust that. But the first one was 70, the first one, the second, the first one was 60, the second one was 70. So I would imagine it's still within the yeah. 70, 75. So we can, range. it'll make its, it'll make its money back. Yeah. I mean, the first is, one made like 170 million. The second one made 206 million or something like that. So, I mean, it's, it is at the end of the day, a profitable series. Not yeah. by much, but it's enough that. It's now saying 40 million was the production budget. Got it. So nah. they made half their budget back on the first weekend. Okay. They'll make the rest of it They'll worldwide. They'll be fine, yeah. Okay. I think Gerard's a bigger star overseas than he is Everybody's here. a bigger star yeah. overseas. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Then let's see. They're still not giving the budget for Ready or Not on Box Office Mojo, but I believe I read that it was like six and a half or seven. Okay. So really, let's talk about this then. Let's get into the And it the made how much office. this week? Ten mil. So it's already in the green. It's fine. Yeah. Which to be like, oh, this is another... Right. Because now we do live in this weird era where Disney is looking at these Fox movies and all of them but Breakthrough have bombed. Right. 
So hopefully this is a good side of like, well, this little indie darling, right. this original new IP that we can now milk for and decades. got critically acclaimed. acclaimed. People right. love it. It's yeah. great. The yeah. main actress is amazing. Samara is fantastic. <laughs> and it's weird, right? Because you compare these, these two movies. And Olympus Has Fallen has made $21 million off of a $40 million budget. Mm-hmm. So it's in the red, but, but right. we know the worldwide nonsense. Right. It's in... 3,286 theaters. Mm -hmm. Ready or not is in roughly 1,000 less, 7.5 million, 10 million opening weekend. Yeah. I think when you look at that scale and you compare your apples to orange, it's hard to compare these two movies. Right. But I almost look at like the Game Boy a little bit. And you look at something like Tetris, and you okay. go, well, you know, Tetris hasn't made that much money. And you look at it, it's like everybody who owned a Game Boy owned Tetris. Had that in and it's one of the most successful right. franchises in the world. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, that's crazy. Right. Um, because it had that opportunity where other games don't, and so you don't really, you're like, well, we're not going to compare it to Bubble Bobble. <laughs> but, you know, not everybody owned a Game Boy, right. so this is this makes sense. Or it's like when an, a Nintendo game does well, and they're like, well, you know, Legend of Zelda sold 70 million. Oh, but that's less than God of War. Right, and you're like, well, I'm no like, shit, Sherlock. Because, God, because <laughs> Sony is in every the install base, base is, is so, so much, different. Right, it's much but, with, but then when you go, well, God of War's attach rate was about 40% of right. console sales, and Breath of the Wild had a 101% Every single person that owns a Nintendo more has Breath of the Wild. people <laughs> bought Breath of the Wild than owned a Switch. There are two copies of Breath of the Wild in some homes. So it's like, you gotta look at that and be like, that means something. Right. I don't know what it means. Yeah. I don't know if it just means that the brand loyalty of Nintendo is bigger than right. that of Sony and God of War. Correct. But when you bring that back to this, you really gotta look and go, okay, of the shot that Ready or Not had, it hit the target way more often. Yeah. This is in almost 4,000 theaters. Normally, no. when you're in that much, you're, coming you're making like 50, 45 60 mil. Is, yeah, 45 is your low your low end number. And usually when you're in that, this is Fox Searchlight's 15th highest grossing movie for an opening weekend yeah. alone. Not totals, right? right? Behind movies that are substantially bigger. Yeah. With bigger stars and bigger names and whatever right. else, you know, whatever. Other nonsense you want to... I think that's good, and maybe I just want to be like, look at this good original I, movie. I, I but- think the, the I think the big thing too for Ready or Not that people have to understand is like it's doing this solely off the love of one trailer. Like that one, one trailer, trailer is what got people into watching this film. That's it. Yeah, no one knows most of this cast. Like like this is all done on well, one. Well, look, trailer. it's a horror comedy. Right. Those are always a tough sell. Yeah, it's. That is a harder concept, right? I can't sit down and be like, it's Evil Clue. Right. Like, it really is like, well, there's this family, family and they play this thing, and, da, 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 yeah. and then there's yeah. a great twist at the end. Yes. <laughs> um, I love that movie so much. Fuck Angel is Falling. <laughs> uh, lowest of the franchise for an opening. Yeah. 30 mil. Well, only you know, 21 for both London and But Angel. the first time that they've opened at number one because nothing... And theory came out like if, if if we said this before the mic if Ready or Not had a thousand more theaters I feel like Ready or Not would have been the oh well one. I mean that's the thing if you multiply these numbers right. if you look at this ratio that's yeah. my point if you yeah. look at the ratio yeah. it would be a different story um and my last note though is I will applaud London has fallen for it didn't do it on its own but a lot of people will argue that it brought back the R-rated action movie. That, I will say, because that that was the big thing that people had between Olympus Has Fallen and White House Down. White House Down was very PG-13 neutered, where that first, that Anton Fuqua one, like, he's shooting people in the head, stabbing in the knives. So... We don't really have, outside of John Wick, an R-rated franchise, so if you do want one of those 90s gritty style... And they trace that back to Columbine, when the entertainment industry, again, for the umpteenth time, was like, it's because they market it to children. Yeah. That didn't stop the nicotine company. (laughs) Correct. Uh, We didn't listen to that then, (laughs) because where else would I smoke? (laughs) Um... But so that's good. Yeah. Right? That's something. I mean, that's that's, a a plus. That and you know what, that's where to our originality conversation, there is also something to be said about innovation and challenging something. I will take like Deadpool is not the most original superhero movie, but it was our first R rated one. Right. So that it's a lends itself to this and Joker will be kind of the same. Yeah, that'll be it's gonna be a test. That's a very an original take on an unoriginal property. Right. Right? And that it's 
it's such a weird conversation, and I think I'm just frustrated by it because I feel like this year I made a very long Twitter thread just listing original properties, everything I, I, that's coming out. Your your post made me very happy because it's one of those things where I see a lot of people saying, "Oh my God, there's so everything's not original." Like there's there's Lion King, this there's this this this, and I'm like, you're saying that yes because those are making that's making money. But in the theater, while those are out, there's also The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Did you see that? No, because I did. It was great. But you didn't see it, but now you're standing on this precipice to say that they don't make original stuff. Did you see Loose? Because it was great, too. Did you see Ready or Not? Fantastic movie. I mean, just even, like, the summer is now over. Right. So in theory, we should not be getting bombarded with Oscar movies, and we're not. Really. We're not. We're, like, Blinded by the Light is out. Yeah. The Goldfinch, Hustlers, Ad Astra, Lucy, although Hustlers is, like, a remake of a very old movie, so that shouldn't be there. Lucy in the Sky, Jojo Rabbit, Motherless Broken, Last Christmas, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Rhythm Section, Knives Out, The Aeronauts in 1917, and that takes us home. Right. And I get it. We just had D23 this weekend, and they shot so much shit at you. <laughs> Disney threw everything, including the kitchen so sink. So I get kitchen. it. It's yeah. hard to cut through the noise. Right. But they're there. It's there. I just don't think people want to do the work. I think people are get so inundated. Or, they're, really what they're saying is they want an in-game level box office for that, something like Ad Astra. That is what they want. They want something that is like, hate you give, making billions and billions of dollars. I'm sorry, guys. That's not it's going to happen. It's never going to happen. Yeah. Just look at the, go through the history. There was yeah. that fucking uh, video showing all like the top 10 movies of all time it was always sci-fi mm-hmm. horror and then it by the 70s it was just franchise franchise yep. franchise franchise yeah. franchise like it just people get connected to these characters right. when they're kids really right and There's they grow up reason. with them it's ingrained in them yeah and I, I and I, I feel like a lot of these people who make these complaints don't leave room for the people who enjoy both. Like they feel like you either or. You either only like right. the big films and don't like the small ones, or you like both. I'm like, did you see Booksmart? Because I did. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, like, look, even in the horror area, yeah. right? For every it chapter two you have, you have Midsummer and Crawl. Right. Like these movies are still there. Yeah. And that's before we get into all of Netflix's original IPs. Correct. Hulu's, Amazon's, TV. Like it's it's there, and I and I almost think that's where the conversation then really becomes: Was well, Fast Color a new movie, or is it just ripping off every other superhero movie? Right. Is Brightburn a new movie, or is it really just like, eh. yeah, Anna is another example of like we've I like seen that movie Taken a lot, but a it's a thing, right. times. But yeah, yeah, like we've done this, and it, it's hard, you know, to really find something like Ready or Not. I'll even use Palms, Us, yeah. And you know what? The other thing is, they're not all good. You have things like replicas, which is a bad film. Yeah. Like, for yeah. It, it, which is also why people don't go, right? I have a. Movies are expensive. I, I have I, an AMC. If I had, did not have the AMC stubs. Terrence, we couldn't do this podcast Correct. anymore if I didn't have AMC A-list. Correct. Yeah, like, if I didn't have the A-list, I would not be able to do this. And I would not have seen movies like Last Black Man and Summer. Like, those films, while I want to see them, I now have access to them, and I. But I don't think not everyone does that. There's some parts of the country that still don't have that. They they spend their money only when they can take their family to that one thing for the entire like three month yeah. period. They're going to go see the big big budget film. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's a hard thing to fight. The point is, Angel Has Fallen is not an original movie. It's not. And Ready or Not is doing very well for what it is. Yes. And it's a very new idea. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Break Gerard Butler's back the next time you tell me his back is a ticking tie bomb and then you launch that back. Because you know we're going to do this again because he has incriminating evidence against every studio head. I mean, I would buy it. (laughs) Um, Leave us a review on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and the places, and we'll see you guys next time. Later.